Hey everyone, I'm outside of the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and today they are unveiling Neil Armstrong's spacesuit from Apollo 11. So I figured I would uh, take you along to see what the event was about. Hopefully you enjoy it. Let's go. Mike, check. Checking one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I'm inside. The event starts in about a half an hour. So a couple important people are gonna be here. Vice President Mike Pence, the Administrator of the Air and Space Museum, Alan Stefan, and the Administrator of NASA, Jim Bridenstine, is going to be here today. The way it's basically going to work is the spacesuit is upstairs um, in a very small room um, where, you know, it's not really open to the public quite yet. So they're going to announce the suit. It's going to be unveiled on a television for us, but then we're going to be allowed to go upstairs and take a closer look at it. I cannot wait to share with you guys what we're about to see. Well, the uh, rubber bladder in particular, which is inside, um, is getting brittle and hard. So there's ways to slow down that degradation that we're looking into and have achieved with our new uh, support mannequin and case for the suit, uh, meaning it needs to be in a tighter controlled environment, needs ventilation, uh, all these pieces that we didn't have in place before. But uh, some of the technology we use to look at the inside and then now we'll use in the future, which is more readily available, CT scans, uh, X-ray radiography. Um, we, we performed all those exercises during our research, so if we need to access the suit in the future, we'll have those to fall back on. Really, in the last five years is the first time we've been able to look inside those 21 layers. You can't take the suit apart. I mean, all of that is very historically accurate. Um, it would destroy the layers, but we know things are happening to these materials inside, and we just need to really keep track of that. Also, I need to indulge in one of the best parts about going to events like this, and it's the snacks. So what was it like to work hands-on with the suit? That was incredible. It's really amazing, yeah. Like, just, um, it's we, one of the ra the rarest or just most famous artifacts like yeah, in human yeah, history, yeah. almost. And I've been at the Smithsonian for a while, so I've scanned all kinds of things. But okay. this was really super special. So we brought all of our tools, and for an object like this, we bring every tool in our toolkit, right? Yeah. Just like you mentioned, this is, you know, one of the most iconic objects yeah. in the world. Um, so we brought uh, laser scanners, structured light scanners, um, we did perform photogrammetry, that's a way of taking um, super high resolution digital images okay. uh, and then mapping that color data onto that laser scan data, which is the super accurate geometry capture. So we're kind of combining all these different capture methods. So Man. this one act of 3D scanning, we're supporting conservation, exhibit display, um, online audiences. Yeah, this is definitely one way of conservation just because, God forbid, something was ever to happen, you guys ha are able to recreate it to a degree. Here, yeah, you know? to, to, I mean, nothing replaces the object, of course. right? But, but yeah, having this incredible level of, you know, high fidelity 3D capture is great just as like an object status report. So that in the future, if more conservation happens, they have these reference images. of the suit ensured it could support human life in the harshest of environments. Extreme heat and cold, radiation, micrometeorites, and the threat of cu cuts from sharp rocks all had to be taken into consideration. As our curators note, these spacesuits were actually single-person spacecraft. But while they were designed to endure the punishment of a lunar walk, they weren't designed to last half a century on display. We're happy that the work we've done will extend the life of the suit and ensures that generations to come can be inspired by it. Commander Neil Armstrong's name is synonymous with undaunted courage, the American spirit of exploration, and the evidence that humanity's potential is limitless. We remember the service and the accomplishments of Apollo 11 and of its commander, Neil Armstrong, but we also we also do well to remember his courage, that steely professionalism that saw him through an entire career of incredible accomplishment and saw that mission to a safe landing and return home. Five, four, four three, two, one. All right, so they are about to let us in lots of cameras um i think they're putting it next to the right flyer okay i'm just realizing that from where i'm standing i can see the suit so the visor is actually a little 
translucent. It just looked like it was completely reflective, but uh, turns out it actually, I mean, you know, yeah, it was clearly designed for uh, the astronauts to be able to see through, but it's actually, uh, I don't know, I just found it kind of interesting. You can kind of see through it. Okay, it looks like I'm up now. Okay, so something I have noticed about the suit is that it doesn't have like the bubble helmet um, during launch and return, basically anything happening inside the capsule, the crew had their bubble helmets on. Um, and then when they were on the surface or doing EVAs, they had the shroud over top that basically just had a reflective surface. They don't have the bubble helmet, not sure it is, it's not a deal breaker, but the suit just looks amazing. Also an interesting just juxtaposition, you have Neil Armstrong's suit, and then you have the right flyer. So, pretty awesome juxtaposition. Um, we tried to make it a little bit more lifelike pose. Uh, the spacesuits tend to be, and the uniforms tend to be um, displayed sort of statically, and we wanted to give a little bit more life to this. This is also the first time the suit has been displayed with the helmet and gloves again. Um, and we were able to do that by developing a mannequin where they are not directly attached to the suit as they seem to be, uh, but there's space in between the mannequin frame, so they're resting close to the suit. Um, and this entire um, display case mimics our storage environment. So it's a cooler temperature, lower RH, relative humidity, uh, low light levels um, after, when you, after today. And um, yeah. It will just be displayed here in the gallery for about a year and a half till we move it into our permanent gallery. Okay, well, that's Neil Armstrong's spacesuit. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a great time. Hope you learned something. If you're in DC, I highly recommend you go and see it. There may be a line for the next couple months uh, just because it's a new artifact and a lot of people want to see it. So I'm going to go uh, to work now and I'll catch y'all later. Of this it's awesome bye bye okay, there's an insane line outside folks want to see the suit